As a boy growing up in Fishtown, whose grandfather just happened to be the commander of the local American Legion post, it was pretty much expected that once I reached Cub Scout age, I would participate in the post's annual Memorial Day parade. Waking up early with my father, also a member of the American Legion and my Cub Master, was actually quite a treat. We'd stop in the post's headquarters before the parade, and usually somebody had stopped in Claus's Bakery and fresh butter cake was available for the legionnaires and the ladies auxiliary who were setting up to give out hot dogs and birch beer to those who marched and the neighborhood kids who had watched the parade. I would sneak a piece and then my father and I would walk down Palmer Street and around the block the tulip and air where marchers would be staging for the parade. What I didn't know at the time was that just down the block from where we were staging that eyesore of an old factory that we had passed at Palmer and Tulip was where all the baseballs used in the American League for the first few decades were made. In fact, it wasn't until 2015 when I saw an article by Frank Fitzpatrick on the Philadelphia Inquirer's website that I realized that baseball legends such as Eddie Collins, Ty Cobb, and Connie Mack had come to that very building just around the block from where I grew up to visit the workers who would make baseballs. Although it's condominiums now, it was the Alfred J. Reach factory, named for its owner, a pioneer of the very beginnings of baseball in the United States. Philadelphia Baseball History presents Baseball Pioneer, Al Reach. Mugs, phone cases, t-shirts, and more, all in our merch store. Celebrate your favorite player or team. Link in the description below. Born in London in 1840, Alfred J. Reach was the son of a cricket player, Benjamin Reach. In 1841, Benjamin and his wife Elizabeth moved the family to just outside of Brooklyn, New York. An industrious child, Al began working first as a newsboy and then as a ship caulker, and finally as an iron holder. In his spare time, Al played a sport that was becoming popular in New York, baseball. Al founded the Jackson Junior Baseball Club, named after the president, Andrew Jackson, and even enlisted his mother to help make the team's uniforms. Al caught the eye of one Henry Eckford, a shipbuilder who founded the Brooklyn Eckfords, one of the nation's best baseball teams in the late 1850s and early 1860s. Rich played second base for the Eckfords, who played their games in the Union Grounds, the first enclosed baseball field in the nation. Soon he was the team's star second baseman and was quite an innovator of the game. You see, when the game first started out, the defensive players in the infield often played on the base that we were assigned to. So second baseman would play on second base. Reach changed that so that he was standing off second base close to the first so that when the ball was hit he was in a better position to field it than if he was playing straight out the middle. His reputation grew as a ball player and by 1865 the Athletic Baseball Club of Philadelphia offered Reach a salary of $25 a week to play for their club. At the time baseball was considered a purely amateur sport. Reach had to be paid in secret. Some will claim that Al was the first paid baseball player, although others say that honor belongs to Jim Crichton of the Brooklyn Excelsiors. On paper, Crichton was given a job in the club's administration, although it was understood that the job had no duties other than to play ball. By 1865, the Athletic was becoming a nationally competitive team. It is widely believed that the Brooklyn Atlantics, the reigning champions, denied the Athletic the opportunity to compete fairly for the national championship in 1865 and 1866 due to so-called miscommunications and misunderstandings. In 1867, the Athletic won the first match from their series with the Atlantics and claimed the second game as a forfeit due to the Atlantics not being ready to play on the day of the match. Having won the series, the Athletic claimed the title of national champion, although the Atlantics disputed that claim and brought the dispute to the Judiciary Committee of the National Association of Baseball Players. It has been argued that the committee, dominated by New Yorkers, ordered a replay of the forfeited game, but delayed the decision long enough that the unions had defeated the Atlantics twice, thereby claiming that they had actually won the national championship. 
The Judiciary Committee, by the way, acknowledged that no rule existed, giving them the authority to order a new game between the Athletics and the Atlantic. Reach remained with the Athletic in 1871 when the team was among the founding members of the National Association of Professional Baseball Players, the first fully professional league. The Athletic had the distinction of winning the first fully professional league pennant in 1871. Reach continued to play through 1875. In 1874, he was among the athletic team that toured with Harry Wright's Boston Red Stockings in the country of his birth, England. The two teams were allowed to play their games on local cricket fields, provided that they agreed to play the local cricket clubs who owned the fields. Reach's background in cricket most likely came in handy for the matches, as Harry Wright and his brothers George and Sam had to give instructions on how to play cricket on the boat ride over. Al retired from playing after the 1875 season. When he first came to Philadelphia, he had established a cigar shop. But seeing the rising popularity of baseball, Reach established a sporting goods shop on South 8th Street in Philadelphia in 1874. So Reach was not among the athletic team that first joined the National League in 1876. But Reach did make money with his sporting goods business. He teamed up with leather worker Benjamin Scheib and together manufactured baseballs. Reach also published an annual guide to baseball. The Athletic were expelled from the National League when they ran out of money to make their final Western road trip in their inaugural season. Philadelphia was without a professional baseball team until 1882, when the American Association, also known as the Beer and Whiskey League, created a new athletic team to play in Philadelphia. By 1883, the National League, led by President Abraham Mills, wanted to put a new team in Philadelphia, the second most populous city in the country, and offered the franchise the Reach. Outreach accepted and became the first owner of the Philadelphia Phillies. That 1883 team, however, was dismal. Reach hired an old friend, Harry Wright, to take over as manager of the Phillies, and soon Wright was instructing the team in the fundamentals. Wright made the team competitive, although they never won a pennant under his leadership. Reach's partner in the Phillies was Colonel John Rogers. The two had a falling out with respect to how to run the team in 1899, and Reach decided to divest himself of any ownership of the team. By 1901, Ben Johnson had turned the Western League, which was a minor league, into a rival major league, now named the American League. He recruited Connie Mack to help manage a new team called the Philadelphia Athletics, and Mack in turn recruited Ben Scheib to become part owner of the Athletics. Ben Scheib, of course, was Al Reach's former business partner, and soon Reach became the exclusive supplier of baseballs to the American League. In 1905, Reach became a member of a committee to determine the origins of baseball, headed by former National League President Abraham Mills. This was the committee that determined that baseball was invented by Civil War hero Abner Doubleday in Cooperstown in 1839, a story that we now know is not true. Al Reach eventually sold his sporting goods company to Al Spalding. In 1928, Al Reach died in Atlantic City. Al Reach was a key pioneer in the early days of baseball. He was an innovator on the field. He was a sporting goods magnate. He was the owner of one of the oldest sports franchises in the world, which still exists today. And he was a businessman who helped support the upstart American League. The only mystery of Reach's life is how such a pioneer is still not inducted into the Hall of Fame. Don't forget to like, click, and subscribe please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Link in the description below. And we have a merch store. We have a variety of t-shirt designs available, plus mugs, phone cases, and face masks. Thank you so much for watching.